Before you take this retake, is it called District of Columbia because it's close to Columbia, Maryland? I don't know. No one knows. Do you want me to look it up? It's okay. I just had that moment of realizing. Or is Columbia, Maryland named after the District of Columbia? Columbus, Ohio. Which one came first? D.C. or Columbia, Maryland? Or A.C.? Tweet at us. A.C., D.C. A.C. came first. Akadakas. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know that good band, Akadakas. You're laughing? That's what they call it in Who Australia. Does? In Australia, really? yeah. Aww. Bardic Mystery Tour is a 5th edition D&D actual play about a rock and roll band that solves mysteries while they're out on tour. I'm Ed, and I'll be your DM. Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm playing Kemen. He's a fearbolg, which is a half-giant, so you can picture him. He's got dusty blue skin, floppy lammy ears, and he's wearing a leather vest with chevron cut fringe, um, and boots of spider climbing, and a train hat. He's also got a familiar that's a raven whose name is Crow. He's, like, so cool. Hi, my name is Brayden, and I'll be playing a Matryoshka doll of a character again. Staff is a changeling who is hiding his identity from the band Dream Lancer, so instead, Staff is pretending to be Scrapper, who is a young woman shifter. And The shifter has feline characteristics and was hired as the replacement guitarist for the band Dream Lancer. Wendy here, played by Nora, the most famous snow leopard tabaxi bard from the Snowy Mountain clan you'll ever meet. Wendy loves snow and hunting frogs, teaching Lars new tricks, and making up really entertaining stories where she gets to be the hero. Last time on Bardic Mystery Tour, the gang defeated a group of devils and destroyed a strange contraption built to empower the deviless that rules the vile army. We join them as they flee the scene and head back to the base camp of the commission in order to save their pet Lars with a scroll they found. This is Bardic Mystery Tour. You guys are done destroying this room with this giant vase. No, the vase was in the chapel. In the... the sarcophagus. Yeah, yeah, but what was the hopper thing? We called that a hopper. We called it a hopper. The hopper is really like the fun... Whatever, the whole thing is... Ho- whatever. A hopper is the funnel part and, and the container part that's on top of it. That's all the hopper. Yeah, but which part is which of the hopper? Just what are the, the parts part of a hopper called? Who like the, cares? The bin part. Bin part. Nora, I think anyone that's listening to this podcast at this point is almost purely concerned with semantics. Otherwise, they couldn't have made it this far. <laughs> Maybe they just skipped those parts. Wow, that's a short podcast. <laughs> so you guys are leaving? Yeah, we're heading back to where our drummer Lars is. Do you guys want me to, like, uh, make ourselves invisible so we can sneak better or just run for it? I think we should just run for it. I think invisible is good because I'm a huge bloody mess. Oh, uh, that's true. Pieces of my flesh are falling off. All right, hang on here. I have six hit points. It's a lot of hit points. Yeah, it's a lot more than I used to have. I stick out the three-finger peace sign. Choose a finger, guys. I touch Kemen on his knee. Thumb. I cast invisibility on the three of us. And then I telepathically am like, hey, Crow, who's been up on the building this whole time. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're going back to save Lars. You come in. All right. All right. And then we go wherever. You head towards the direction you believe you came in by attempting to follow this pipe. Somebody roll a survival check to see if you navigate the steam tunnels. 16. 10. 12. You are following the pipe, and then ahead of you, in the darkness, you hear a lot of infernal chatter. Does it sound panicky? It sounds barky, like orders. How long does your tongue spell last, Nora? It's an hour. Oh, yeah. And you cast it to listen to them around the corner. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To listen to them around the corner, yeah. Okay, yeah, you hear uh, somebody with a really grumbly voice that's saying, like, All right, everybody, fan out. we got to find these interlopers. What's a name for, like, a... Scofflaws. I don't know if that word translates well to Infernal, because if you said that in Infernal, it probably sound way too much like the like ordinary word for it. It's a loan word. From where? From common, from ordinary. Maybe it's an ordinary loan word from Infernal. Think about it. Because if you, if you <laughs> said it like this, then like... Donald Duck and his crew would be the window. <laughs> oh, you need more like a scarflaw. But based on the number of commands he issues... It sounds like there are a large number of devils that are down here looking. I share that information with my party quietly. I nod in understanding, but she can't see me. Invisible understanding? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to whisper to my homies, hey, let's go back and go out one of those other doors. They got to go to other churches in the city, right? Okay. Yeah, man. We go back to the room with the hopper. And we choose a door at random. All right, on the way to the door with the hopper, when you're at an intersection of tunnels, a light appears down a different tunnel that's not the one you're coming from or the one you're going to. Oh, shit, is there light in the tunnel we've been in? When you came down, it was lit by that red by that red glow, and the red glow is much fainter, but it got you this far, but it is continuing to grow dimmer, which is why I had you roll a check to see if you could follow it or not. Okay. But Kevin did okay. From the torchlight coming down the corridor, you see a shadowy figure wearing a cape. And then they pull a lever on the wall, and a secret passage beside you opens up. And then they point at it with their hand, and then they throw their torch in the water, and you can no longer see them. I want to go in. Okay, let's go. Uh, we got to trust this person, I guess. I don't know. I was terrified. Well, the worst thing that happens is we die. Tell me how much they looked like a cultist and how much they looked like a person trying to keep their identity hidden. Uh, they were backlit because the torch was behind them, so it was really difficult to say. But you would say significantly more vigilante looking than cultist looking. Did they have on um, a black hat? A hooded duster? So you can't discern color because it was backlit. Okay, we followed them. But they had a long flowing cape and they had like a three quarters face mask like you know those like ninja masks that uh how can we see all that if it's cover backlit? your mouth look you can see the silhouette really well and you can see that there's not definition to the lower three quarters of their face and then they had a hat on that maybe it looked like vampire hunter d's where it had like a really long piece coming out and then like a forky top thing i think it's zorro okay let's go in and follow the fox How am I going to know if I'm supposed to follow if you guys just go and don't say anything? You're going to have to use your big boy brain and decide on your own. Okay, well, once they go, I'm like, guys, I don't hear anything. You hear the devil voices coming closer and closer. So I go in. As soon as Kevin goes in the door, you hear the stone mechanic sliding noise of the door closing behind you. Moments after the door closes all the way, you hear loud footsteps and devil voices on the outside. They've got to be here somewhere, only Wendy can hear them say. Um, how dark is it in here? Dark. Can I see anything with my dark vision? Yeah, you're on like a very narrow path that has stairs in it that go upward. Okay, I tell the other two to hang. Well, I tell Kemen to hang on to me. I tell him I'll lead the way. I hang on to your... What do you got on the back of you? A tail. It's so weird if I hold on to your tail, man. I'll let it slide this one time. It's much colder in this area than it was in the other area. It's very soft. I hang on to Kemen's tail. I don't have a tail. I hang on to Kemen. Do you have handles on the back of your backpack that I can hold on to? Mm. As you climb the stairs, you begin to see more light... And also, you notice you've been walking on snow that is gradually getting thicker as you climb the stairs. This is snow? As you come to the top of the staircase, you realize that there's a grate that is covering it. And as you peer through the grate, it looks as though there is a city street above you. Where's that person? Wait, that let us in? I hope that this is that... They were far away from the... Shredder guy. No. What's his name? I can't remember. From the Ninja Turtles. The mouse guy. Splinter? Yeah, I hope this is Splinter. It's it's not. It's not. 
<laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> it's hard because it's already McKayon, so it's tricky. You think the shadowy figure down the hallway was McKayon? Yeah. They were significantly taller than McKayon. I don't think it was McKayon. I think me? it was somebody from the Resistance. You think it was Dwight Schrute? Yep. Beat Farmer. I mean, Dirk Fidget. Dirk Fidget's dead because the entire Resistance was killed by the Devils. Remember from episode J? Finville? J- Inville? I want to look around at the top of the grate to see if there's anybody around, especially any devils. All right, roll a perception check. 27. You see the normal bustling of a city street. There are devils around, but you seem to be in some sort of semi-secluded side area where you may not be seen if you emerge. Um, Can I use my magic wand to make a distracting sound in like a street away from us so that everybody will look that way and we can move the grate. Yeah, like a loud bang or something yeah. down like the alley the opposite side of the street from you. Yeah. Wait, don't wait. What are you using? Prestidigitation. Is that going to ruin your invisibility? Oh, yeah. But yes. but it's her wand, it's not her. So is it still it's still casting a spell with an action? Yeah, let's just move the grate sneaky wise. Okay. Wait, I want to look. Is there a switch? Like at the bottom, they had like a really fancy mechanical apparatus to move a wall. So, like, probably one up here, too. We're on investigation check. I got a 12 on my investigation check. You don't find any levers or levers or switches or knobs or buttons. All right, Kevin, it's time to use all those big muscles you have. I have so many big muscles, guys. All right. Push that grate up, and we're going to skedaddle out of here as fast as we can. All right, are you doing it forcefully or stealthfully? Stealth forcefully. All right. Uh, uh, I'm going to... What if I roll two I'm gonna say that 20 The way you phrase that it makes it sound like you get disadvantage on your stealth check, but since you're invisible, you get advantage. So we're going to negate those, and you're going to have to roll just stealth, non-advantaged. 18 stealth. All right, you slide the grate out of the way. With my muscles. Yep, quietly. Most actions you take use muscles. Yeah, I told you guys. See? And then I flex a little, and I do like the beach is that way. But twist. we can't see I it. I whisper back down into the hole. I'm like, Kevin, Wendy and I are up here. What are you doing? I climb out. All right, are you replacing the grate, or are you just... Uh, oh, I put it back. Are you going to put it back stealthfully? Yeah. All right. Stealth strongly. All right, roll stealth check. Roll advantage. No way, you said stealth strongly. If you just said stealth, you get advantage. I have strength, I just am strong, so just regular stealth. When I offer you the either or, you said both. Thirteen. All right, you put the grate back. All right, now we go. We gotta go to, back to camp. Who wants to roll like a survival check to see if you can figure out how to get out of the city? Because you're not next to the temple where you went underground. Seventeen. Twenty-three. All right, you guys managed to get your bearings in the city, and uh, you head out. You're heading back toward the base camp. Hex, yeah, real fast with that thing in hand to read the scroll and save Lars. Do we make it back? Only the future will tell. Tune in next week to Bardic Mystery Tour to find out how your heroes do in the camp. Do we see any cool wildlife on the way back? Roll a perception check. Twenty-one. Yeah, you find an ice platypus. Can I just stalk it? I don't want to kill it. I just want to, like, observe it in its natural habitat. Yeah, roll a survival check. I keep going without her. 16. Scrap her what? I got a 16 perception. Did I find a nice platypus? Nope. Did I you find found it? a nice platypus. Yeah. No way. A platypus can't live here. This is like a temperate zone. Yeah, I don't have any time anyway because I care about saving Lars. I'm not selfish like Wendy. All right, Wendy, you watch the ice platypus for a while doing whatever it does until your friends begin to get a little too far away from you. Does it go find another ice platypus and then they frolic? No, it just like digs in the snow looking for food and it fails every time. Aww. What's it eat? Ice frogs. Yep. I give it the ice frog that I caught earlier. All right, it eats it. Wait, you caught an ice frog? I think so. She got a toad frog. I got that toad. I gave him the toad. Okay. It's half toad, half frog. Does he look like he wants to be your friend now? No, he just eats it and runs away. Dang. Are they ice frogs or snow frogs? It's half toad, half frog. No, I'm talking about the thing that we've been looking for from before. 
Ice frogs. Snow frogs. Ice is frog the is the name of the person question. that makes Dota. It's a snow frog and it's an ice toad. Nor Nor doesn't know she made a uh, Dota reference. All right. Nor knows I Dota. bust into the tent. Hold on, Kemen. I left you guys all behind. No, Nor gets a little bit of agency here. Anyway, Nora, you uh, try to catch up before they get too far away from you. Yeah, but I want to like, I want to try and like skirt around them and then like surprise them, and I blend into the surroundings because I'm a snow leopard. Yeah, and also because you're invisible. All right. Roll. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> roll. Platypus couldn't even see me. That's probably why he was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Where did this ice toad come from? It came out of the sky." Nineteen. Okay. Do you guys want to roll perceptions or? 22. 20. All right, they see you coming. <sighs> Fine. I rejoin the party. I'm like, hey, Wendy, we got hurry. They're like, look, Wendy shaped footprints in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Wendy's not around. Ahead of you, you see a cart and a man leaning on the cart. Is he wearing a ninja thing over his face? No, but he doesn't look like he's doing super great in the keeping all of his blood inside of his body department. Do we recognize the man? Yes, it's Indelion. Oh no, Indelion. What happened? He's like, quick, the devils, they're chasing me. We have to get the weapons back so that we can get them to the resistance. I cast Cure Wounds on him real fast. Okay. You got a grizzly cut there. It's laying your bone quite bare. But if you come on. Wendy snaps into visibility. True. He's like, oh, I'm glad it was you guys and not some other invisible people that were trying to kill me. Most of the invisible things I run into are imps. Did you see devils? I didn't get the weapons delivered. They uh, they fought me. Where are the weapons? I ran into a batch of spine devils. I don't want to sound like some sort of super sleuth, but are they in this cart that you're leaning on right now? Yeah, the crate that's in the cart contains the weapons that are magical. We got to get the cart back to the camp. All right, let's go. Or to the resistance. We'll, well take it back the to resi- camp. Yeah. Let's take it back to camp. We'll take it back to camp. You guys look like you're ready for another battle, right? No, man. No. I got to right, go let's, save Lars. Let's go back to the camp. All right, I dropped my invisibility so I can see that I'm not ready. He's like, oh, you guys, you got a rough one. Where's McKay on? He is a chicken He's dead? out guy. He left us behind. We uh, told him to leave. You, what's the saying when it, here in these parts when you say they chickened out? Uh, they were reconnoitering. There you go. He's a reconnoiterer. That he is. He ice chickened out. We were never the brawn of the commission. We were always the eyes and the ears. Yeah. That's why you commissioned us. No. Where's my coat? Ah, oh, fuck that coat. I start to run. Wait. Did Kevin lose his coat somewhere? No, I want my fucking duster. Oh. Oh. All right. The party goes back to the base camp. As you're approaching the camp, Lars comes running over to you and he says, Kevin! Yeah, it's Scratches. Yeah. Are you scratches. better? All better. McKeon gave me healthy. How did he do it? He did it. Good. Good. This guy hug him. Yeah. No more coke for Lars. No more. No. Ever. Everything in um, moderation. Yeah, everything in moderation. Lars. Lars. No. Don't listen to them. No more Coke for Lars. Yeah, yeah. Lars snacks. Yeah, I Lars. give him one. Straight edge is just another drug. Yeah, my drug. I guess. Now I just do angel dust and PCP. <laughs> oh, God damn. He's a rock star. What are you going to do? Yeah, he said throw a TV in the pool for him. Did you do that? No. You know why? You don't respect Lars as a rock Where's star. Where's McKay on? I look around. McKay on is in the big tent. I go in the big tent. Okay. In the big tent is Lars. No. What? In the big tent is McKay. One of them's a f- an imposter. There are two Lars. You saved him by they bringing two swear. copies of him from two different multiverses? <laughs> and combining them? The Victors helped you? Oh, my God. I didn't know it was going to tie in. The Victors are canon. It is canon. Um, in the tent is McKayon, Knuckles, Kana, Hope, Clarity, or what's her name? Friendship. Dawn. Dawn. <laughs> Hope. 
Clarity French. I knew she had a name like that. Just start naming Pittsburgh uh, neighborhoods. Yeah, her name's Bloomfield now. Um, anyway, the list is McKeon, Knuckles, Ka'ana, Dawn, and now you guys, and Endelion. What about Lakendra? Uh, Lakendra and Arch are not there. Hey guys, we uh, we beat all the devils. All of them? Oh yeah, oh. all the important ones. I think that we might have taken out an important aspect of the cult of the beautiful blood. We destroyed the sarcophagus and we brought this, and I pull out the syringe. Nice. And Delion says, congratulations to McKeon and his crew for completing the task. McKeon didn't do shit. Uh, McKeon's job and it's done. Think about it. I go up to McKeon. Yeah? And I go to shake his hand and say, thanks for saving Lars. And then I hug him. Well, I knew somebody had to get back here and take care of business. And you guys were busy doing the dirty work. So I just snuck up on that altar, grabbed one of those scrolls they were using. Nice. It worked, so that's good. I was kind of a wing and a prayer, you know? But that's what reconnoitering can do for you. It can save your pets. Ask not what reconnoitering can do for you. Ask what it can do for your country. Ask what you can do for reconnoitering. So what's the plan? What do we got to do next? I need to take a break and want to do a short rest. And Delion's like, well, I'm pretty beat up. I fought some devils and I'm not super well equipped for it. Knuckles, how'd your uh, thing go? And Knuckles says, no luck. I was looking for Johnny, but ran into too much resistance. I killed a bunch of devils, but I'm kind of beat up myself. Me too. Unfortunately, I think the devils know that we're here now. Like um, in existence, man? Or like here, here, location? Um, Like we're here. What? Like we exist in this location. What was that question supposed to mean? Do they know that we're here as in we're in this Town oh. or in this exact spot? Yeah, they don't. They didn't discover the camp. Is not what I mean. On the ground, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Performing an assault on their way of life. Thanks for explaining, Wendy. I, I raise my hand. Always count on you. Yes. I think we should take a long rest. Yeah, should we vote? Sweet. Uh, no. We should just all go to bed for the night. I take a little snoozer with Lars. Wait, what? I said we didn't vote. It's fine. <laughs> are you saying that you sleep with Lars? Yeah, you know that there are people that sleep with pets, right? You know Lars, he like chews things and stuff. He's going to chew your face off while you're sleeping. That's true. I don't know. What if he has a really bad dream? Yeah, it's okay. What I'll if he talk. poops your bed? He's not a dog. Well, we're sleeping <laughs> like on the floor of a tent. It's fine. We'll just shove it out. Do you poop in your tent when you go camping? I don't know, but if he does, how as do you the not animal, know if you poop in your tent <laughs> when you go camping? You I've never been whether... camping. I'm kidding. No, I don't poop in my tent. We're not camping with Emily because who knows? Guys, want to go camping next weekend? No, no. <laughs> not with you. I don't know. Yeah, the three of us will stay in you a tent. Don't know. Emily can stay in a tent. She can poop as much as she wants in her tent. I take my hammock outside and go sleep outside in the wintry cold. Okay. I cast Liam in tiny hut. L E O M U N D apostrophe S. Liam got a tiny hut and a big enough for all of us. Liam got a tiny hut and a big enough for all of us. You guys don't sing songs of rest for long rests because it doesn't matter. Right, it's only for short rest. Okay. It's time to sleep, we're tired now, and maybe soon we'll eat a cow. That's my song of rest. Hey everybody, it's your favorite Dungeon Master Ed, and I wanted to say thanks for listening to the podcast. I think you guys are all awesome. I'm really worried about Dream Lancer, I don't know what's going to happen to them. Uh, but in the meantime, while we're taking a little break from all this, uh, you know... Very intense, long resting that we're doing. I just wanted to say, maybe what you could do, this is just a good suggestion to think about. Go over to bardicmysterytour.com, and there's a link that goes to a Redbubble page. And if you wanted to, you could buy yourself a, let's see, a Bardic Mystery Tour themed duffel bag. That sounds really cool, right guys? Or... What about this sweet Elithid content poster? Maybe a mug or something? We got some stuff over there. You can check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, if not, why not find the uh, Bandcamp link? You can buy yourself an album. that uh, Any of the stuff that's not on Spotify, you can also buy over at Bandcamp. That stuff's really cool. 
I love our music. I think every single song that we write is actually better than every single song anyone ever, else ever writes. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's true. So listen to them. If you don't have uh, time for that, just find us on Spotify because it's always cool to listen to Bardic Mystery Tour while you're driving around in your car, checking out all the cool things in the world. So, you know, you're not doing any of those things, you know, since, you know, an episode's only, you know, 40 minutes and it's, it takes two weeks to come out. So, you know, you got a lot of free time because I know that really the only thing you do is listen to Bardic Mystery Tour because that's how dedicated you guys are. And on like the 50th or 60th listen through, like it's time to, you know, time to check out some of these awesome websites we're always talking about. So um, check them out. And if not, maybe... Just keep listening to the rest of this episode because it's pretty cool because we're in it and that's what makes everything cool. All right. See you later. You wake up in the morning to the sound of our rooster that you didn't know existed, but it's obnoxious. An ice rooster? No. A nice rooster? No. There aren't nice roosters. That's a fictitious animal. Do you think this is a fantasy setting? You didn't tell him that an ice rooster was fictitious, though. <laughs> is it real? Yeah, maybe it's an ice rooster, but it wasn't. I don't know if you know anything about roosters. They're dicks. They go, kikiri ki. I don't know if that's the sound normally attributed to a rooster. Depends on where you're from. I put a necklace of muting around the rooster's neck. <sighs> that's actually real smart. Who's, how are you going to wake up tomorrow? Our goal is to never wake up again. Well, I'm going to get it back. I'm not going to leave it there. You think you're going to find this rooster? It yeah. was like just a wild rooster. It's not like a... Oh, I thought it was like part of the camp. Nope. I thought they like brought it with them. No animals in the camp. Are there parts of the world in real life that have wild roosters that just scream in the morning and you're <laughs> fucked because you can't find them? Probably, but now that you mention it, maybe not. I don't know. Definitely somewhere that like lost all their roosters. But I bet chickens die in the wild like a lot. Yo. They're known to taste good. Well, specifically, like, farm chickens that have their wings clipped, they don't last long in, in, in nature, I'm sure of it. Yeah. All right. And Delion says, what's happening today? We still got to deliver these weapons to the resistance. We still got to find Johnny Necrotic. And now we got to find Arch and Lakendra, who never came back last night while going to fight the Ice Devil. And we may have been too late, and we may have lost them. Well, if we're looking for Johnny Necrotic, maybe we should, like, learn a song from Ka'ana and Knuckles and, like, just play that loud and proud and look for him. A death save song. What did I say? A song. You just said a song. I meant a death save song. Thanks. What do you think, Knuckles? Is that a good plan? I wasn't paying attention. Can you say it again? What if you and Ka'ana and some of us, like, learn one of your songs as death saves and go play it until Johnny Necrotic is like, wow, that singer sucks. And he comes out of the woodwork. I'm not saying that you should sing, no, Wendy. Yeah, you're saying Scrapper should sing. Yeah. Well, mostly I'm just saying that Fuck he'll... you, Wendy. I'm mostly just saying that... Maybe uh, Lars should sing. That's Maybe cool, Lars too. Maybe should sing. I could sing. It's fine, guys. I'm just saying, not trying to start a fight in the band. Johnny Necrotic will be mad because he's going to be like, I'm the best singer in the world because he's got like a giant head. All right. I think that plan will work. All right. Well, we got to go find a place to set up. I don't think we should do it in the camp. That seems like a bad idea. And Delion says, all right, well, then it looks like what we're doing is we're writing off Arch and Lakendra. And since both of these Wait, tasks. Wait, it's like dead? Yeah, yeah. And since both these tasks are in town, what we do is we find the resistance real quick, give them these magic weapons so they can try to fight off the other devils that come and try to fight us while we're setting up a rock show. We set up a rock show, we play a rock show, and then Johnny Necrotic will be so mad that he comes and fights us. Should somebody, like, pretend to look like Johnny Necrotic so then he gets real confused and even more angry? Or is that, like, overkill? Because my boy, uh... Scrapper's real good at costumes. He was one time a dog person, and it was really uh, fooled me. Oh, yeah. My girl, Kemen, is good at doing all kinds of shit, and she does all kinds of shit because she's so fucking girly she? and shit. Yeah. Doesn't feel good, does it? And then I'm I sorry, storm man. off towards the cart of weapons so we can get on the road. Oh, Scrapper. Babies can be boys, too. Yeah, I didn't mean it, like, in... It's too late. I already stormed off towards the cart on the road. Boy, like, B-O-I. Okay, I go over to the cart. What's up, Scrapper? 
I'm just trying to get this mission done and not be misgendered constantly. Okay, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to misgender you. Okay, well... I just called you my boy because you're like my pal. Yeah, but then you said he. Oh, sorry. And so now it sounds like you're trying to cover up a mistake by saying, no, boy could be anything. Well, I mean, that is true. You don't understand what it's like to be a girl. That is true. In the patriarchy. That's true. Let's get let's get this uh, let's get this plan rolling. Before you get too far off on this thing, wasn't Mr. McStuff a boy? I guess. Okay. McKeon says, I think I should go look for Arch and Lakendra. How about you gaggle of fools go take care of business? Oh. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I'm sorry, were you talking to us? We were having a talk about things. What'd you say? Anyway, see you later, and then he's gone. All right, let's get these weapons down to the town. Pronto. Should we take Valerie? Well, we definitely need to take all of our band equipment. Yeah. So that's probably in our cart. We got to move it to this cart. They're going to see our cart and they're going to know it's not Death Saves. Wait, is the Dream Lancer card called the Dream Lancer? No. Uh -uh. Don't be stupid. It's called Lance a little bit. Yeah, that's canon. Lance some? Lance once in a while. If it is time for us to vote, I think Lance some is very funny. Well, if we're all taking off, we're not going to just leave, like, Dawn here by herself, right? So we're just all going, right? I think she should probably stay here. Oh, we're leaving people at the camp? She's not very experienced in combat. I don't think she's ready to take on Johnny Necrotic. Or maybe even Spine Devils. Yeah. Or maybe even Imps. So who's staying at the camp? Definitely Dawn. And Knuckles says, Lars, and we don't need Lars. Lars should stay. I'll drum. Lars. Yeah. You're going to stay here with Dawn. Yeah. You guard her. Big tough Lars. Take no care of Dawn. drugs. Yeah. And watch over no Wendy's coke. cocaine. Yeah. Dawn. Yes. Stay here with Lars. Okay. No drugs. Yeah, I don't. I don't do drugs. No, I don't give a fuck if you do drugs. But if you give Lars any kind of drugs and I make a gesture to threaten her. Look, Lars is in charge of his own destiny. You don't give him any. I am on an adventure to see the world. I'm going to write a book about it. Okay. I tell Don, if anybody comes in this camp that's not us, you shoot him, okay? With my firewood bow? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can talk to them first. I mean, don't just... No, go. you shoot them. We're in devil country. I don't know. It's like a farmer that needs help from devils. I don't care. You shoot them. Okay, I'll do it. Did that ghost box go off because we all came back and stuff? Well, it went off when McKeon came back. So maybe, should we redo it? Make alarm bell sounds. Okay. Wah, wah, wah. Like an air horn? Like the take cover sounds. Yeah, like that. The, um, like the air horn of, like, it's air hard to make sirens. that sound. Yeah. You did a really good job. It was hard, but you conquered the feet. All right. We set Dawn up. She's good. She's got her alarm. She's got her bow. Lars staying with her. The rest of us. Who else is going? I'm going. And Delion is like, I can go with you to show you the signs of the resistance so we can try to find their headquarters. Cool. Thanks, dude. Because it's underground. And I don't mean, like, beneath the surface of the earth. I mean, like, secret. It could be both. It might be both. But I guess you would know. Well, what's the secret handshake? I haven't learned it yet. Oh. What's the secret password? Is it banana? It's bless you. Okay. Banana was a good one, though. But devils can never say bless you. It's against their religion, which is them. So it's just against what they want to do. Wait, their religion is them? Yeah, the way that that sentence is structured is confusing on a right? philosophical level. Yeah, and look, what's God's religion? Doesn't have one. Which, See, bam. which God, though? Any God. Depends. Pick a God. Okay, Zeus. All right, what's Zeus's religion? Greek mythology. I, I don't know if that's a religion. I don't think that that's true, yeah. See what I'm saying? It's convoluted. The devils don't worship something, so the rules that are in place for yeah. devil worship... They don't worship, like, a, an ultimate devil? They have, like, a command structure. They have, like, a leader, but it's different than worship. They don't worship anybody. I don't they know. They worship themselves, kind of. Like it's the same as worshiping. This is the thing I'm talking about. They expect others to worship them? I don't, like, do you worship your boss at work? Some people do. No, yeah. I don't. But you know who doesn't? Levistus. Do some devils sleep with their bosses? <laughs> I bet you a lot of devils sleep with their bosses. To get a raise. To get a rise. To become risen. Do they have a 40-hour work week? 
No, they have like a 90 hour work week. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, but how many hours are in a day in hell? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. They might have a 400 hour work yeah, week. Yeah, or more on the nose, how many are in a week? Yeah, they might have a 666 hour work week. How much of a weekend do they get, though? Mandatory three days? No. Where do devils go on vacation? Just a different layer of hell. You're from hell. It's nice, though. Like, where do people from, like, the beach go to vacation? Other beaches. See? That's what I'm saying. Like, if they go to the hell beach, is it, like, just waves of lava? It depends on which layer of hell. Like, sometimes it's, like, the moans of regret. That's relaxing to them? Yeah. They love it. Not this is true. why we don't want them here. Yeah, I don't want that. Because they're trying to do that here. They like shitty things. Yeah. yeah. They appreciate agony. Cue the song. Agony that can cut like a knife. Is that the song that you meant? We have been talking about covering that for a long time, so it's not a zero percent chance that that happens. I like that song. From the summer play, Midsummer's Night. Midsummer's Night in the Woods. Midsummer's Night in the Woods. From Night in the Woods. It's from Into the Out of the Woods. Dang it. Into the Midsummer Woods. Out of the Into the Woods. I saw that play in The Big Lebowski. Into the Big Lebowski. Yep, that's the one. Into the Big Woody Lebowski. Let's get out of here. I follow Scrapper and I put my arm around her. I'm like, listen, dude, I'm real sorry. I just don't care about names and stuff for me, so it's hard to understand. But I'm really sorry. Yeah, it's okay. We're still we're still homies. Let's just get these devils out of here. Okay, I'll fucking. I think they're messing them. with our emotions and making us irritable. Can I hug you? You can try, and then I slip out. Dang. And I poke Kevin in the gut, and I go, ha ha. And I go, hoo hoo. What are you, the Pillsbury Doughboy? We go, and we kill every devil, and we don't die. And Bardic Mystery Tour saves the day. Bardic Mystery Tour does? Way to go, Antler Mayhem. Suck it, Dream Lancer. Eat it, Death Saves. Thanks for listening to our podcast, everybody. It's been really fun. We win forever. <laughs> we won. <laughs> what became of Arch and Lakendra? Will Dream Lancer be able to get these magical weapons to the resistance? Will playing a death save song be enough to lure out Johnny Necrotic? And who was this mysterious shadowy figure? Find out next time on Bardic Mystery Tour. show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com bardic mystery tour is recorded at looking for group pittsburgh looking for group pittsburgh is a land center in the brookline neighborhood of pittsburgh pennsylvania if you're in the area stop by for games co-working or events find more information or schedule your next party at lfgpgh.com all right Nora, what do you do I, since I've successfully sneaked, I make my way to the cafeteria. Yes. What do you order? A lot of meatballs and a lingonberry soda. All right. Did you bring your wallet? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. You can eat that. I sit next to the windows that overlook the entry area, and then I smile down at Brayton looking very, like, impatient. Whoa. Does he see you? I don't know. I don't know. Roll for it. What? That's you perceiving over there, bro. Roll a C, Nora, upstairs check. Mm, we got a 15. That's pretty good. You see someone out of the corner of your eye that reminds you of your friend Nora. I look more closely. It's her. I give her the finger. Does she see you? The middle yes. one. Are you watching? Yes. Oh, what do you do? 
I uh, make the under the table O sign back at him. I run up there. All right, cut to the real show. Oh, does this employee? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Me? I meant like the real show. Like, we're going back to Lars dying. Oh, uh, I thought you said I was a real show. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I was excited about oh, being the real back show. Back to the real show. It's like when Cliff was at the end and it was like, back to the real show. And then we did Lars for a while and it was awesome. Okay, back and to the real like, show. Meaning it. Back to the I boring mean, people. Meaning. McKayon leads you down a side road. We'll never know. Does it look safe? Wait, I want to point out an important, unrealistic part of Emily's DMing thing. If she was flirting with him, she would have definitely been like, oh, are you trying to get flowers for your girlfriend? Because that's, that's how girls flirt. And then you're like, no, I don't have a girlfriend. And then they're like, green light. Here oh, we go. I'm a girl and I don't flirt Some like people that. don't care. Some people are just real direct. You think that there's a whole variety of women who may have been flirting with me in the past I didn't know because they didn't ask about my girlfriend? Yes. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Especially if they're nervous. Right now. I never knew. I only knew when they asked about my girl. I, in fact... For many times when they asked about my girlfriend, I didn't know they were flirting either. I found that out recently. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know. I'm also not a good DM. I don't actually know what I'm doing. You're but... a great DM. Oh, thank you. You might be a bad flirter. Well, that's also true. <laughs> don't take my word for it, because you just found out that I'm even worse at flirting. 